Hello, my name is Russell Myers, independent for U.S. President for 2024. So, uh, U.S. defense contractor Lockheed Martin has contracted with uh, the Saudi government, uh, Saudi defense contractors, which are state-owned, so it's with the Saudi government, to produce, uh, what is this, uh, uh, subsystems and assembly of terminal high-altitude area defense THAAD anti-ballistic missile systems. Now, Saudi Arabia, I thought I had done a video on this. I guess I must have recorded one and left it on my other computer. I need a secretary to get more organized here. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, Saudi Arabia up to this point, has uh, delayed full confirmation about joining the BRICS bloc. And some claim this agreement means they will not be joining. It doesn't mean that at all. Uh, nothing about this agreement means that Saudi Arabia will not join BRICS. And this is not the great victory that some Westerners believe it to be by a long shot. Uh, something that you have to take into consideration that uh, is that if Saudi Arabia does this, what does this do in the United States, first of all? First of all, it sends U.S. jobs manufacturing these systems to other countries. Uh, so these are primarily living wage jobs. Other factors that are involved is that we're exporting defense technology to these other countries. Now, if you think that, now, these are subsystems, but they have to interact with the major components uh, of these systems. Uh, so, you're, you it's easy enough. We're always worried about our technology getting into other hands, uh, that it, our technology, our defense technology can be reverse engineered. But here, we're just handing part of the technology to another country. Our relationship with Saudi Arabia for the past couple of years at least, has been somewhat fraught. And it's going to remain that way because we are competing with Saudi Arabia on oil trade. So, so yeah, they're, they're not too happy about that when you consider that the United States basically violated the... Uh, petrodollar agreement that was reached back in 1974 so that all oil all of their oil would be traded in dollars in defense for us providing defense for them and but this was with the agreement they also that we were not competing with them on oil trade but now we are so you take a look at just the cold reception that uh, Biden got when he went and met Mohammed bin Salman and uh, calling Mohammed bin Salman a, a pariah. And, you know, obviously I'm uh, not real freaking happy with the uh, to say the least, that an American journalist was slaughtered and by this regime. But we have to deal with things as they are, where we can't overthrow that government. I'm sure that we could if we wanted to. Um, but are we going to? Is that ethical? And who would take his place? 
chances are that whoever would take his place might be even worse. Just like we talk about overthrowing Putin, well, if we overthrow Putin, then whoever takes his place is highly likely to be further right-wing and a lot more aggressive. So our relationship with Saudi Arabia is also not doing so well over the issue uh, of Palestine. Saudi Arabia is not taking an active hand in Palestine, but they're very much politically against Israel on this. Something you have to remember is that Saudi Arabia is a member, a leading member of the uh, Arab League. And in 1945, 47, the Arab League was uh, created in opposition to the creation of a Jewish state in the Middle East. So that still holds. That, that still pretty much holds. So for a, a, an Islamic Arab, Arab state to be under attack with the expressed intent of genocide in, in Gaza, that's not sitting so well with the Arab League. Remember that, uh, you know, all of these Arab states got together last year, I believe, and they made peace agreements. Saudi Arabia and Iran made peace agreements that were moderated by uh, China. And Syria has been welcomed back into the Arab League. And now Egypt has announced that they intend to de-dollarize, to stop using the dollar for trade. So we, where does this stop? Yeah, yeah, we're going to keep on uh, arming Israel and Saudi Arabia, and Turkey, and uh, who, the Kurds, which that's interesting enough. We're arming the Kurds, and Turkey, who are fighting with each other, so we're arming both sides there. This uh, does not sound like a good idea. I mean, uh, so, we're exporting jobs, living wage jobs, we keep on hearing, and, and a lot, how much of this is funded by your tax dollars? We're, we're, we are always hearing how building weapons and selling weapons is, is supposed to create jobs for Americans. Well, now, those jobs are being exported to other countries, and this is not the only foreign country that is producing U.S. military equipment. There are others. So you're not really creating jobs for Americans. You're creating jobs for Saudi Arabians. Does this make sense to you? And, and then these weapons get shipped off to uh, who? Uh, to Ukraine or uh, whoever. So the money comes in, but then the jobs that were supposed to be created, oh, they're, they're somewhere else. And, of course, you've got our just defense status. So we have 
equipment, military equipment, weapons that are being produced in another country. Well, let's say that they decide that they want to want us out of there. Okay, they kick us out. What happens to the production for our defense? All of a sudden, that just goes to zero. You can't produce these systems because now the production has been cut off. And no, the Saudis are not just, uh, they're not investing in manufacturing plants, spending tens, hundreds of millions of dollars to produce these uh, different components just for their own use. This is for export to other countries. There is no loyalty among uh, weapons contractors. There, there's no national loyalty among them. Uh, just like other corporations, all they care about is the bottom line. As long as they can produce things as cheaply as possible and, and get paid by anyone, including you, then They'll keep, and they guess, guess who the people are that you wind up seeing as experts uh, on network and cable television. Well, you get, you get these defense contractors and CIA, uh, you know, veterans, people that are always pushing for more and more armed conflicts all over the planet. Meanwhile, you're paying for all of these conflicts. Our defense, I, you know, our defense just went up to $880 billion a year. And that's just for the Pentagon. It does, include, it does not include the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, the Department of Homeland Security, the VA system. None of that is included. If you add all of that together, and let's throw in federal prisons and uh, the, all of these things all contribute to our actual defense. If you add all of these things together, we spend more on defense than every other country on earth combined think about that and we only make up four percent of the world's population but peace talks not going to happen i oh we can't do anything to stop israel from conducting genocide but we'll keep sending them weapons and giving them money to buy the weapons Or just giving them the wep just giving them the weapons, whatever. Ukraine, we just keep on sending them money, keep on sending them weapons. Nobody says we're not going to give you any more weapons or sell you any more weapons unless you sit down and engage in active peace actions, uh, not talks, actions. And that would be my standard. I would embargo any country that is engaged in an armed conflict unless they are taking actions to end that conflict. Doesn't that make sense? Instead of keep sending weapons, keep sending weapons so that the conflict goes on longer and more people die. And we make more enemies in the process. Does this make sense to you? If this makes sense to you, if what I am saying is making sense to you, 
share this video. Talk about these subjects. If you can afford it, please donate whatever you can to help expand this campaign. And I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day.